All right, there's a lot of ways to beat Minecraft. Minecraft is real popular. You already know that, so let's get a little bit more specific. Beating Minecraft is really popular. Speedrunning has been taking the world by storm this last year. In a relatively short like period of time, thousands of entries and a laser-focused community have made Block Game the top speedrunning game. Beyond just speedrunning, the idea of beating Minecraft has been crazy effective on YouTube to get clicks and watch time, especially since you can mod the game to make this challenge a little bit more interesting. You got runs of the game that offer creative limitations with never-before-seen challenges, uh, twists on the game's mechanics, or just making the game uh, way easier to beat. Of course, like with many other games, the humans aren't the only ones making a scene here. I would really prefer if you would be quiet. We've got TAS. A TAS, or Tool Assisted Speedrun, is a handcrafted run of the game, where a TAS creator can perfect and cherry-pick every single input at every single frame of the game. One way to think about it is to imagine you're designing a track in Beat Saber, Guitar Hero, or Carpal Tunnel Simulator. But here's the problem. Minecraft is procedurally generated. Every part of the world is constructed with randomness, with near-infinite variation. This is not ideal for TAS. Each random world can be considered a different level. If you somehow manage to get a TAS specifically designed for one level to play in another, it would fail very quickly. Same goes with Minecraft. The only way to run a Minecraft TAS is to have the same world generated every time you run the TAS. For this reason, TAS spots are limited to set seed worlds, which create the same world every time, as opposed to random seed worlds, which generate different worlds completely unique every single time. While humans can tackle both random and set seed worlds, robots are limited to set seed. Robots can only really play in deterministic worlds. They're doomed to forever do the same thing over and over again, albeit really, really, really fast. But is it possible for a bot to beat a random seed world? Well, to make that work, you'd probably have to put an insane amount of time researching things like machine learning and other technology that's still kind of in an R&D phase. For ordinary Minecraft nerds such as ourselves, making a bot like this is completely impossible. Or is it? Let's take a step back. If we want to create a bot that's capable of beating the game, do we really need machine learning and thousands of hours of research? What if we can just get away with tools that already exist? Well, when it comes to ML, one Microsoft team has been working on this thing called Project Malmo, an AI experimentation platform that is used as a stepping stone for research. It's tested things like navigation and other agent systems that can collaborate with each other to accomplish something. There's also MinRL, a competition centered around reinforcement learning. The top submission from their 2019 competition managed to collect iron ore from a fresh survival world. Totally mind-blowing stuff. But despite that, despite this being a marvel of tech research, if the best we can do is get iron ore, it doesn't look like AI is going to beat the game anytime soon. So let's take a step even further back. Do we even need machine learning in the first place? It may seem like, since Minecraft is a complex game, to beat it you need a complex solution. But in truth, you don't. Enter Project Baritone. Baritone is a pathfinding system that's gained a lot of popularity, in part thanks to one Anarchy Minecraft YouTuber that drinks their milk. It can navigate through worlds, build structures, and do parkour. If you haven't heard about it yet, please go check it out. It's amazing. Anyway, you might actually be surprised to hear that this really amazing system doesn't use any AI to accomplish what it does, as many people will lead you to believe. Not in the machine learning sense anyway. That's a misconception. What Baritone actually uses is a modified version of A star, a pathfinding algorithm whose base pseudocode can fit on one monitor. No neural networks, no reinforcement or learning, just hard-coded rules. This makes Baritone a lot simpler than AI, although I don't mean to imply that it's easy. Months and months of bone-crunching work were put in to make this work, and you can't deny that. In addition to being simpler in theory, Baritone is incredibly reliable at navigating. This may also come as a shock, since the AI we mentioned earlier was pretty limited in what it can do. There's a good reason for this though. Most of the AI we mentioned could only see pixels the game renders to the screen, sort of like a human player. 
but Baritone is a client-side mod that can grab every piece of information about the world, things like block positions and types, mobs, and anything that the client loads in in a clean and robot understandable form. It's much easier to program pathfinding if you know exactly what the world is and not just what it looks like from one perspective. So if we want to beat the game autonomously, Baritone's gonna be on our shopping list. So what? All we gotta do is tell Baritone to beat the game? Is there a command for that? Uh, hold, hold your horses, not quite. Let's start with something a little bit simpler. Let's get diamonds. Pretty tough, but much more manageable than beating the game. Baritone has a mine command built in. So, all we gotta do is use that command to mine diamonds and we're done. Easy, right? Well, not quite. First of all, there's a difference between mining diamond ore and getting diamonds. Mining diamond ore requires nothing other than your fist, but obtaining diamonds requires an iron pickaxe. If you tell a human to mine diamonds, it's implied that they should get an iron pickaxe first. But Baritone? Don't care. That little buddy will do exactly as you say without thinking twice. This means that you must give the bot an iron pickaxe manually, and monitor to make sure that it doesn't run out of picks if all of them break. We want to remove all human intervention if possible, so let's create a system that does this. Alright, before getting diamonds, let's try something simpler. Let's get a stone pickaxe. So what do we need for a stone pickaxe? Well, we first need to get some wood, make a crafting table, place it down, get some more wood, make some sticks. With a crafting table, make us a wooden pickaxe, and then get some stone to make a stone pickaxe. So this is a linear set of instructions, and it's how you usually describe tasks in Minecraft, right? A set of recipes, a set of steps. But unfortunately, this runs into a few issues. What if you already have a wooden pickaxe? What if you already have wood? What if your wooden pickaxe breaks while you're doing it? There is no check built in here. So here's a better system for this. Each resource can have children that it needs to be created. For instance, the stone pickaxe needs stone, sticks, and a crafting table, and planks need wooden logs. This system is much more dynamic because it clearly defines what each resource needs, and also if we have resources that are already met, say you want to get a stone pickaxe but you already have stone, you now know that stone is already satisfied so you don't need to go down this path and you can completely ignore whatever's over here. This does have an issue though in that there's a lot of redundancy. You can see the planks being repeated multiple times. If we want to say add an iron pickaxe, it's going to add a lot of extra stuff here. Here's our final system. Like before, we have a resource and we have children, but the children don't have to be fully defined. All we have to do is define the child somewhere else and we're good to go. So we can see that the two pickaxes, their only difference is their material and what's being received, and it's a lot clearer here. There's also some small notation here, this means you need a crafting table placed nearby, and this means you need that specific pickaxe to break the material. We can actually extend this further to getting diamonds. So here we have our previous stone and wood pickaxe along with the wood materials. Now all we have to do is add some extra resources over here and we're done. We can get up to diamonds and we can take this even further if we wanted to. All right, so this system isn't that new of an idea. Back when Baritone used to be called Minebot, it had this thing called Early Game Strategy, a mode that automatically collects a stone pickaxe from a fresh survival world. And this was done over four years ago. I'm pretty sure though that the system was not designed to scale beyond getting a stone pickaxe, which means it probably used either a linear or full tree approach. Anyway, in the technical section, I showed you a system that can theoretically work, and if we test it, it should work, but we'll bump into one challenge real fast. Survival. If we try running this on peaceful difficulty, then we have no problem. The world is static and the system will happily do whatever it needs to do uninterrupted. But if we want to try this on any other difficulty, the system will have to deal with things like hostile mobs and hunger. Currently, our system ignores all mobs, which makes it really easy for a horde of mobs to surround the player and steal all of their lunch money. Starvation and healing are also completely ignored. To fix this, we can slap some extra requirements that take attention away from the main task and trigger when the player is in danger, or needs to survive. If, say, the bot is mining diamonds and encounters a creeper that's about to blow up, the system will notice and then take attention away from the mining diamonds task, and instead focus on running away from the threat. If the bot has low health and is not at full hunger, it will eat food and pause mining in the meantime. This isn't the cleanest solution to the problem per se, but it works. So you know the theory now, but does it work? Well, let's try it out.
Okay, looks like it works. With the tree approach in mind, we can expand the bot's abilities to do all sorts of stuff. Now we can easily craft diamond armor, tools, and a bunch of other items. And of course, now that we've shown how easy it is to get diamonds, we can go further. So, what's next? Well, I don't know about you, but back in the old days of survival Minecraft, right after getting diamonds, the next step was to craft a diamond pickaxe and then get some obsidian. 10 obsidian later, or 14 if you're feeling fancy, and you have enough obsidian to build a nether portal by hand. Back then, the nether was the next logical progression after getting diamonds. At this point, my nostalgia kicked in, and that's where I went. I tried making the bot mine obsidian, but sadly that didn't work so well. Obsidian doesn't spawn naturally and must be created with flowing water over lava. This means most of the obsidian the bot encounters will be underneath water and above lava. Baritone often gets stuck in flowing water and refuses to mine above lava, so that's not going to work. I could also try the speedrun approach with the water bucket and lava pool, but there's a lot of randomness there and more flowing water, which Baritone hates. In the end, I made the bot 3D print a portal frame with lava and water, which was slow, but reliable, and that's what matters. So the bot can go to the nether, and so I ask myself the same question again. What's next? How do we push this further? I think you can all tell where this is going. So I'm just gonna skip to the- Alright, here's what you need. Let's go. In the nether, the bot searches and scans every loaded chunk for a nether fortress. If it finds one, it searches every loaded chunk with nether brick until it finds a blaze spawner. It then hangs around near the blaze spawner, killing blazes and tanking hits until it has seven blaze rods. For ender pearls, the bot can either trade with piglins or hunt endermen. I was lazy and programmed this thing in 1.16.4, which has half the pearl trade luck of speedrunner's preferred version, 1.16.1. That also makes one seventh the odds, a cool, Minecraft green man who harbors healthy relationships with his fans. Due to this crap luck, we're hunting Enderman, because changing one number in the mod config file is too much work. And unlike our epic Virid male who plays block game, I wasn't in the mood to flex my coding skills by programming a separate server-side mod to give me better odds. After getting 14 pearls, the bot crafts 14 eyes of Ender and throws exactly one eye. Ender eyes only tell you the direction of the stronghold, not their position. So most speedrunners throw two eyes in two different places to locate their direction intersection, which in turn locates the stronghold, a process known as triangulation. But not the bot. Once it throws the eye, it just has to travel in that direction in a perfect line until the stronghold gets loaded underground. By scanning the world, it knows immediately when it's loaded and where it is. Once the bot enters the stronghold, it fills the portal, jumps in, and then destroys everything in the end. Finally, it just has to give the dragon a good ol' slap. Bada bing, bada boom! That's about it. It might take some time. I'd say a successful run would take around three to five hours of time. But once it does all these tasks successfully, we will have the world's first Minecraft speedrun to be completed entirely by a bot. If you're watching this shortly after the video's release, I will be streaming the bot beating the game either on YouTube or on Twitch this weekend. Check the channel for stream announcements. You'll see it if you subscribe. Wink wink, nudge, nudge. A hundred percent of my viewers aren't subscribed to the channel, so... Alright, so I know that there's going to be a few questions, so I'll try answering them ahead of time. Question 1. Is this hacking? So yes. However, you may think that if I use baritone and other hacks, that I can just hack my way through the rest of the game. Doing things like giving myself permission to teleport, uh, modifying my inventory, creative mode, whatever. That's not really how this works though, because this bot is a client-side mod, like baritone. If I wanted to, I can run this bot on any server, without asking the server owner to install anything themselves. So, while this is hacking, I'm not modifying anything about the game itself, like the player's inventory, drop rates, or position. Question 2. Can this bot outrun human speedrunners? Nope. 
and unfortunately for random worlds, it probably never will. Remember, there is no machine learning here, so the bot's pretty dumb. If I tried super hard to squeeze every second out of this thing, I could probably get the bot to finish under two hours, but I don't even know about that. Also, right now the focus is not speed, but reliability, because watching a bot die over and over and over again on a risky run would get boring real quick, not to mention that it would cost up to dozens of hours of extra time. Question 3. What else can this bot do? Since I'm a nerd with, with too, too much, much free time, time, I programmed a few extra things. It can collect over 400 items like cake, TNT, and armor, run commands through chat whispers, and do other stupid things, like, like print the entire B-movie with signs, collecting signs if it runs out of them, or becoming a Terminator that runs away and picks up diamond gear and then hunts players, giving them a good old, you know, slap. Um, but yeah, just, just a bunch of random stupid stuff that I've been working on. Question 4. Can you program this bot to do something for me? If it's simpler than beating the game, then yeah, but... This isn't quite a AAA gaming company, you know? I'm not gonna, not gonna do unpaid labor uh, unless I get something out of it. So, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, little Timmy won't get his PvP bot yet. However, if you do want to work together on something, absolutely hit me up. If it's something that benefits both of us and is pretty cool, I'd love to use this bot somewhere. So, yeah, hit me up. Question 5. Can this bot be used on Anarchy servers? Yep. But only if they're on Minecraft version 1.16 or higher. Getting Baritone to compile as a library with Forge was way too difficult for me. So I developed this in Fabric, which doesn't work with 1.12. It also looks like 2B2T is going to be moving to 1.16, so getting this running on 1.12 is not high priority for me right now. However, if you have experience getting Baritone libraries to compile in Forge, and want to help me port this to 1.12, hit me up. I will try my best to make it worth your while. Question 6. Can I try this bot for myself? Absolutely. Check the project GitHub linked in the description. I've got some instructions on how to compile the project. You'll probably want to do this in IntelliJ. Programming experience is also not required, so anyone should be able to try it out. However, if my instructions in the GitHub aren't clear enough, please let me know in the comments so I can write up a better guide. Okay, okay, that's, that's about all it. The time I've got. Now you know exactly what I've been working on these past months, and some of you may hopefully get to witness this moment in Minecraft history, as niche as it may be. Once the bot successfully beats the game, I'm going to be posting the full run and a cut version on this channel for you to watch. There also might be some other content related to this bot, which I'm pretty excited about, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, keep it cool everyone, and I'll see you next time.